gave lots of answers that didn't give anything away, but... <laughs> Uh, at least you said something. Piqued interest. <laughs> as opposed to just going over there. Now we have and just, a million more you know. questions. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I really do get to clean up. <laughs> uh, is there an overview you can give up this season? Yeah, I mean, they, listen, it's a, it's a lot like, in some ways, I mean, it's not similar to season one, but in terms of the story structure, it's, it's a group of young people that land on a new world and have to overcome the challenges and figure out how to survive. I mean, that's, you know, in a nutshell what the series has been about from the beginning. It's all different challenges. It's a totally new world. The, the moon, as it turns out, if you saw the screening today, it's been revealed it's not a planet, it's actually a moon um, of a bigger gas giant planet, which we see in the sky. It's funny, uh, we didn't realize that, that I wanted to... I'm going to back up just a little bit. One of the things that is important, I think, the sort of crucial moment for people this season is, do you believe that you're on another planet? We're, we're shooting this show in the same place that we shot it for five seasons, and to try to make the audience dis, you know, suspend disbelief, to me, was like my mantra. I was hitting everybody with it all the time. We have to push really hard to make the audience believe we're not in Kansas anymore. One of the ways is there's two suns, so of course, you know, that tells you you're not on Earth. The other way is this big gas giant that we've now seen in the sky. Unfortunately, as it turns out, you can't see a gas giant in the sky if you're on another planet. Apparently, there's something to do with, like, orbital distances and shit that I don't understand, <laughs> frankly. But I have really smart writers that were like, they, saw, they took one look at the sort of temp vis effect shot, and they're like, um... Sanctum's not a planet, Jason, it's a moon, and so we had to, like, quickly rewrite some scenes to, as we saw in the, in the 601 screening today, sort of the big, holy crap, it's a, it's a moon scene, so. I don't know if that answers, I have no idea how I got on that rant, I'm not <laughs> no, as good as Tom. I asked you to set up the okay. no, that, that was great. How yeah. much Thank you. Bellamy in the episode Bob doing it? how much, too much. <laughs> One of the things, and I don't mean that in a negative way, I mean like, you know, he wanted to focus on directing. By the way, he's awesome. He did a great job, as I knew he would. Um, but it was his first time at bat, and he, you know, it's hard to direct yourself in, in a performance. And so as writers, we, I, I made it clear, you know, we want him to be in less story in his episode than he normally would be. Unfortunately, sometimes the story breaks, you know, the way it breaks. And he directed 611, and so as it, you know, kind of sets up the finale story in a, in a big way, it was impossible not to have him in it. So there's some really great Bellamy scenes, and, and it was frustrating for him. I don't want to speak for him, but I know it was frustrating for him to have to kind of, like, go in front of the camera and not be able to really fine-tune everything that's happening. That said, we have... A, our crew is so good, and by now, he was surrounded by directors. Like, our first AD, Ian Smoyle, has directed three episodes for us, and is awesome. Uh, our DP, Mike Lindell, has directed two episodes for us. So, there were, Marshall Virtue, our stunt coordinator, directed this season, episode nine. So, he was surrounded by people that were there to sort of, like, help him when he needed it, which wasn't much. But, you know, in those moments when he's on camera, it's hard to also, like determine whether it's in focus. One of the things I thought was interesting in the trailer is you mentioned the um, eclipse-induced psychosis. Yeah. Is that going to affect like everybody coming off the, the choir ship? And can you tell us a little bit more about what that actually means? Yeah. Um, so Allegis 3 landed on Sanctum like 236 years ago and thought they'd found paradise. And then, hi Marie. <laughs> Tell me more. Can I help you? Uh, and then, w within like, I think it was like day 21, when the first eclipse happened and bad things resulted, um, people were never supposed to be on site. It was not a, because of the life cycle cycle of the planet, which is, and I said a little bit about this in the panel, but which is, every time those planets come in alignment, the red sun, as the book says, you know, when the stars align and the forest wakes, it's time to run away. Because eclipse-induced psychosis happens. And, and the insects and the sort of lower level species, really, that's as much, that's as far as evolution probably would have gotten on this planet. Because they wipe each other almost out to extinction every time this happens, and the plants feed on 
on the day. That's essentially, it's a plant-dominated moon. That's probably a spoiler, but whatever. Uh, I can do that. <laughs> anyway, it's a plant-dominated world, and, and that's their defense. And ultimately, uh, when people showed up, it affects them too. It affects our nervous systems as well. So. And so with J.R. Bond's character, Russell, um, is he somebody who's sort of got used to that psychosis and somebody who's going to help them through it or is he going to be a bit more of a... Well, they've definitely figured out they have a system by which they have survived, obviously, as a, as a society for this long, so they've clearly worked out, you know, the ins and outs and what to do when the planets come in alignment and what's their early warning system so they can get out in time, and, you know if they don't, <laughs> they, like, that's all something they've worked out yeah. do they want to have... 500 more people, you know, come into their world, several hundred of which are prisoners, you know, yeah. murderers and thieves and, you know, the worst of the worst, and he's going to know that. Um, that's a big question for his character this season. So. And given that, that given that there are so many of them, are the cryopods, um, are being in the cryopods for over a century, is that going to affect them in any way? No, not really. They, they uh, Maybe it's not the most accurate depiction if there was such a thing as cryo. I wish there was. Uh, but there's very little hangover effect. In fact, they kind of snap out of it pretty quickly. More quickly than I would prefer. Yeah. Anyway. You're returning on April 30th? That's kind of like, I mean, that's right at the beginning of, like, sweeps. Yeah. Where a lot of stuff is going to be going. It must be flowering away that they've scheduled you and things are being competitive. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like, I know that Mark Pedowitz has wanted to program, you know, all year round, right. and, you know, on some level, we're a little bit of the experimental, like, let's, you know, we can bring our audience with us, no matter how late they air us, um, and, it, you know, the world that we live in, as you guys know, as people who write online, um, I'm assuming that's what all of you do. You know, it's a it's a internet world now. It's people watch people watch television and watch these things in ways they don't watch it overnight. They don't watch it, you know. And so much of our audience is international that don't know what the CW is. I hear all the time, you know. Oh, I thought it was a Netflix Netflix show. E4 in England. Yeah. So they thought it was an E4 show. You know. Um, Can you talk about any new characters this season? That'll be the last question. Um, well, we talked about JR some. Uh, Chuku Modu plays, uh, Modu plays a character who is, he's awesome. People are going to love him. I can't talk much about him, but he's a big part of the season. Uh, there are some, there are some, I mean, there's a whole cast of new people coming into it. But we bring them in a little bit slowly. I mean, I felt a little bad for JR today because he's not in the premiere. You know, but he was with us because I felt like he's such a new sort of great addition to the cast, and uh, I just wanted him to get a chance to be up there and talk about him a little bit, even though we can't really say anything <laughs> about what he's up to. But his his whole family is kind of the, our characters that we will know well. Very quickly, can I ask? Not any... Jr. But prequel? <laughs> any news? Uh, there, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I'm working on a yes, I'm working on a prequel script that is uh, sort of the teaser of it. I can tell you forever, but the teaser of it is the essentially 15 minutes to get to the tarmac at uh, Cape Canaveral, where there's three rockets waiting to take people off the planet because they know the bombs are coming, and it's this crazy, you know, emotional sequence, and it turns out that one of the characters that we're following on that journey is Clark's great, 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 I think it's great, great, great grandmother. Um, yeah, and, and so, and her mother is in space as, a, as an astronaut aboard one of the 12 stations, and it's Mad Max in space with air and water and, and fuel instead of gas. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Brilliant. You so Cheers.